As we begin this enthralling journey, let's step back in time, to the 15th century when Cabo Verde, also known as Cape Verde, was first discovered. It was the Portuguese navigators, pushing the boundaries of the known world, who came upon this string of ten islands located off the west coast of Africa. An uninhabited, isolated terrain, lapped by the azure Atlantic Ocean, these islands were soon colonized by the Portuguese, setting in motion a fascinating saga. Cabo Verde was strategically important for the Portuguese during the era of discovery, serving as a provisioning point for ships heading towards the Americas. The archipelago was the ideal location for replenishing supplies and ensuring the ships were ready for the next leg of their journey. The islands began to grow in significance as they increasingly played a role in transatlantic maritime activities. The geography of Cabo Verde is uniquely diverse and captivating. The islands are volcanic in origin, which has resulted in a dramatic landscape that varies across the ten islands. There are arid flatlands that seem to stretch on endlessly, rugged mountain ranges that command awe, and lush, green valleys that seem like they've been directly lifted from a painting. Moving on to the fourth island, Santiago, the largest and most populated island of Cabo Verde. Its capital, Praia, is the hub of politics and economy in the country. Home to 130,000 residents, it boasts of well-preserved colonial architecture, a bustling market life, and an eclectic nightlife. The vibrant Mercado de Sucupira in Praia is an experience in itself, with traders selling everything from African fabric, handmade jewelry, to local fruits and spices. The fifth chapter of our story takes us to the island of Sal. This island is known for its stark, flat terrain and its salt evaporation ponds, from which the island derives its name. But Sal is most famous for its beach tourism, boasting beautiful, pristine sandy beaches and azure waters. The town of Santa Maria, in particular, has blossomed into a major tourist hub. The sixth island, Boa Vista, is known for its spectacular sand dunes and palm-lined beaches. It's a popular spot for windsurfing and boasts some of the most luxurious resort hotels in the country. But beyond its beaches, the island's interior is also worth exploring. The Viana Desert, a small desert with towering sand dunes, offers a stark contrast to the coastal landscapes. As we venture to the seventh island, Fogo, you're met with a completely different atmosphere. Fogo, meaning, fire, in Portuguese, is home to Pico do Fogo, the highest peak in Cabo Verde and an active stratovolcano. The sight of this towering volcano is mesmerizing, and even more so is the fertile land around it, where coffee and wine grapes are grown. The cultural influences in Cabo Verde are rich and diverse. Portuguese rule, African heritage, and a history of slavery and piracy have left an indelible mark on the country. These influences are seen in everything from the local Creole dialect, Creolu, a blend of Portuguese and West African languages, to the country's unique musical styles like Morna and Fanana. In the ninth paragraph, we explore Morna, Cabo Verde's most famous musical genre. Made internationally famous by Cesaria Evera, the barefoot diva, Morna is often compared to the blues for its melancholic, soulful tunes. Evera's deep, emotive voice was a perfect match for Morna's often mournful themes, making her a beloved figure in Cabo Verde and around the world. One of the unique aspects of Cabo Verde's culture is the significance of the Morabeza attitude. This Creolu word translates to a blend of hospitality, gentleness, and kindness. This philosophy of warmth and open-heartedness has shaped the Cabo Verdean way of life, where the community is valued above all. In our 11th chapter, we touch upon Cabo Verde's cuisine, a tantalizing fusion of African and Portuguese influences. Dishes such as cachupa, a hearty stew of corn, beans, and fish or meat, and pastel com diablo dentro, a pastry filled with spicy tuna, reflect this blending of cuisines. The issue of water scarcity is crucial in Cabo Verde. With very little rainfall and no permanent rivers or streams, water resources are precious. The country has turned to innovative solutions like desalination plants and rainwater harvesting to ensure a steady supply of this vital resource, turning adversity into innovation. Moving on to the 13th island, Mayo, it is a quiet paradise known for its stunning beaches and protected forests. It has a laid-back charm, with small villages dotted around the island and fishermen pulling their catches onto the sandy beaches. It's a stark contrast to the bustling capital and the tourist-filled islands of Sal and Boa Vista. The island of Santo Antão, the second largest in the archipelago, is known for its rugged topography. 
From verdant valleys to rocky peaks and precipitous cliffs, this island offers some of the best hiking trails in the country. The Paul Valley, in particular, is a hiker's paradise with its scenic trails winding through terraced fields, tropical vegetation, and small villages. In our 15th chapter, we discuss the unique aspect of Cabo Verde's economy, remittances. With many Cabo Verdeans living abroad, particularly in the United States and Portugal, remittances sent back home play a significant role in the country's economy, contributing to household incomes and providing a safety net for many families. The Cabo Verdean diaspora is an integral part of the nation's identity. This extensive community has helped spread Cabo Verdean culture across the globe, from music and dance to cuisine. They've also maintained strong ties with their homeland, contributing significantly to its economic and social development. On the 17th island, São Nicolau, you'll find a mix of stunning landscapes, from the mountainous terrain in the west to the sandy beaches in the east. This island, lesser known among tourists, offers a serene, untouched beauty and the chance to experience authentic Cabo Verdean life. The island of São Vicente is known as the cultural capital of Cabo Verde. The city of Mandelo, in particular, is a cultural hotspot, known for its music scene and annual carnival, a vibrant, colorful celebration that rivals the famous carnivals of Brazil. Cabo Verde is also known for its significant achievements in renewable energy. The government has set ambitious targets for green energy, harnessing the power of the sun and the wind to power the islands. This commitment to sustainability is an inspiring chapter in Cabo Verde's story, setting a precedent for other nations to follow. Our 20th paragraph takes us to the island of Brava, the smallest inhabited island in the archipelago. Known as the Island of Flowers, Brava is celebrated for its wild, natural beauty, with a verdant landscape punctuated by brightly colored flowers. This island, less frequented by tourists, offers a tranquil retreat from the busier islands. Fishing plays a significant role in the economy and culture of Cabo Verde. The sight of fishermen returning with their daily catch or mending their nets is a common one across the islands. This tradition of living off the sea is deeply ingrained in the Cabo Verdean way of life. Cabo Verde's political stability is another point worth noting. Since gaining independence from Portugal in 1975, the country has successfully established a democratic system. This stability, along with social harmony and economic growth, has earned Cabo Verde the reputation of being one of the most developed countries in Africa. The island of Santa Luzia, the only uninhabited island in the archipelago, is a nature reserve. It's a stark, arid landscape, but its beaches are an important nesting ground for sea turtles. Despite its barren terrain, Santa Luzia holds an important place in the conservation efforts in Cabo Verde. Speaking of conservation, Cabo Verde is also home to some unique wildlife. The islands have several endemic species, such as the Rosso lark and the Cabo Verde warbler, which are found nowhere else on Earth. These species, although threatened, are a testament to the unique biodiversity of the islands. In the realm of sports, football is the most popular in Cabo Verde. The national team, known as the Blue Sharks, has made significant strides in international football. The passion for this sport is evident everywhere, from professional matches to children playing in the streets. The country's education system, heavily influenced by the Portuguese model, has undergone significant transformations since independence. With an increased focus on accessibility and quality, the literacy rate in Cabo Verde has been consistently high, a testament to the country's commitment to education. In our 27th chapter, we explore the challenges Cabo Verde faces due to its geographic location. Being a small island developing state, it is particularly vulnerable to climate change and its impacts such as sea level rise and extreme weather events. Moving to the 28th, we explore the art scene in Cabo Verde. This artistry is displayed in a variety of forms from traditional pottery and weaving to contemporary visual arts. The islands have produced a wealth of artistic talent, reflecting the spirit and culture of the country in vibrant hues and intricate designs. In our next chapter, we delve into the unique festivals of Cabo Verde. One of the most prominent is the Bahia das Gatas Festival, an annual music event on the island of São Vicente. Known as one of the largest music festivals in West Africa, it showcases a diverse range of music genres, attracting performers and visitors from around the world. The 31st paragraph introduces us to the traditional Cabo Verdean dance, the Batuco. This dance, performed by women, involves intricate hand and hip movements, often performed in a circle to rhythmic drum beats. 
The batuco is more than just a dance. It's a form of social commentary, telling stories about daily life, societal issues, and historic events. In our final chapter, we take a moment to reflect on our journey through Cabo Verde. From its volcanic landscapes to its rhythmic music, from its innovative solutions to water scarcity to its proud achievements in football, Cabo Verde has shown us its multifaceted nature. But beyond the facts and figures, it's the spirit of the Cabo Verdean people, their warmth, resilience, and strength, that leave a lasting impression. As we conclude our narrative, we are left with a sense of admiration and a deep appreciation for this incredible country. Until we meet again, farewell.